Hi everyone, my name is Dan and I'm a mental health pharmacist and today I wanted to do a journal club presentation on a trial that was titled simply Trial of Psilocybin versus Escitalopram for Depression. This was an interesting trial that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in April of this year, so a relatively new trial. And it compared psilocybin versus the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant called escitalopram, brand name Lexapro, for the treatment of depression. Psilocybin is a hallucinogenic mushroom that is commonly known as shrooms or magic mushrooms. This trial took place in London and had funding from the Alexander Mosley Charitable Trust. Before I get into the trial itself, I wanted to provide some background information about major depressive disorder and psilocybin. Major depressive disorder is a mood disorder characterized by depressed mood and loss of interest in, or pleasure in activities that used to be pleasurable. Additional symptoms include changes in sleep, feelings of guilt, energy changes, concentration changes, appetite changes, and psychomotor changes such as repetitive movements or decreased movements, and additionally suicidal ideations. To receive the official diagnosis of major depressive disorder, the symptoms must occur for at least two weeks and cause significant impairment. Depression is typically treated with psychotherapy and medications. One of the biggest difficulties with current treatments is how long the treatments take to work. Medications can take over two months to take full effect. New treatments like psilocybin are being studied to see if they can work faster than that. Additionally, efficacy is a concern. So therapy, therapy is extremely helpful in forming new pathways in the brain and treating depression. One recent study found that 42 to 61% of patients had their depression scores cut in half at three months with therapy. And at 12 months, uh, these numbers were between 61 and 76%. Medications have similar efficacy with about 40 to 60% of patients noting a benefit after eight weeks. Psilocybin is currently a Schedule I substance in the United States, which means that it is illegal to have and illegal to use. The ritualistic use of mushrooms is ancient, and statues from around 100 AD are found throughout Mexico and Central America. Low doses cause perceptual changes, relaxation, and physical heaviness, or sometimes the opposite, physical lightness. High doses can cause dizziness, lightheadedness, numbness, sweating, nausea, and anxiety. Experiences with hallucinogenic mushrooms vary from pleasant to scary. One of the mysteries with hallucinogenic mushrooms is exactly how they work in the brain. It is believed that psilocybin stimulates subtypes of serotonin receptors, such as 5-HT2A and 5-HT2C. Every experimental drug tested that stimulated 5-HT2A caused hallucinations. What is confusing is that standard antidepressants increase the effects of serotonin at all serotonin subtypes, including 5-HT2A, but they do not cause hallucinations. Before I get into the current trial that we're reviewing, I wanted to review two previous trials briefly to set the scene. First, an open-label trial of 20 patients was conducted. The patients received two doses of psilocybin, 10 milligrams and then 25 milligrams, in a supportive setting, seven days apart, to treat their treatment-resistant depression. This means that they already failed generally at least two standard treatments of depression. At week five, 45% of the patients had a response, which means that generally their depression score is cut in half. But um, four patients, which is 20% in, in the study, reached remission, which means that almost all of their symptoms of depression went away. A second study assessed the difference between low-dose and high-dose psilocybin on cancer-related anxiety and depression. They started the low-dose group, and all of these were weight-based per 70 kilos, on 3 milligrams, but decreased to 1 milligrams after another study found that 5 milligram dose of psilocybin caused significant effects. The high-dose group was also decreased from 30 milligrams to 22 milligrams after a few patients withdrew from the study after receiving that high-dose. The study found that after the second dose in the second session, 75 and 58 percent of patients in the low dose group reached response and remission respectively, and in the high dose group, 84 percent and 68 percent reached response and remission respectively. 
Additionally, the author stated, although it is assumed the one milligram per 70 kilogram um, would be inert, the possible effects cannot be ruled out entirely, with that low dose uh, being foreshadowing for our current trial. The rationale for the current trial is that psilocybin may have antidepressant properties, but has not been extensively studied yet um, as compared to existing treatments for depression. This was a phase two double-blind randomized controlled trial in patients with moderate to severe major depressive disorder. A phase two trial is a trial conducted with an investigational medication in those with the disease state, in this case, major depressive disorder. This differs from a phase one trial where healthy participants are given the investigational medication generally to assess for safety. So in general, the studies go phase one to phase two to phase three trials. So this was a phase two trial. Patients in this trial were assigned to two groups on a, in a one-to-one -one ratio. Group one, the patients received 25 milligrams of psilocybin three weeks apart plus six weeks daily of placebo. Group two received one milligram of psilocybin three weeks apart, plus six weeks of daily escitalopram, which is an FDA-approved antidepressant medication. Patients were able to participate in the trial if they met the following inclusion criteria. So they had to have a diagnosis of major depressive disorder with moderate to severe severity, um, no MRI, or SSRI contraindications. They must have a general practitioner, so a doctor or other men mental health care provider who could diagnose depression and confirm their diagnosis. They had to be between 18 and 80 years of age. They had to be able to speak the English language. And before starting this, the trial, they had to discontinue any psychiatric medications two weeks before starting a trial medication. And they had to discontinue psychotherapy three weeks before starting a trial medication. Patients were excluded from the trial if they have a current psychotic disorder, a previous psychotic disorder, or an immediate family member with a psychotic disorder. If they had a medically um, significant condition like diabetes, epilepsy, severe cardiovascular disease, abnormal QTC, which is a value they check in the heart, abnormal hepatic or renal function. If a patient had a history of serious suicide attempts, they were excluded. If they had a history of mania, if they had um, borderline personality disorder, if they had blood or needle phobia, if they were pregnant, if they were in current drug or alcohol dependence, or of note, previous use of psilocybin was allowed, if they didn't have email access, they were excluded, if they used contraindicated medications, they were excluded, and previous use of escitalopram, the SSRI in this trial, patients were excluded. Next, I'll go into the trial design. So the patients were required to attend six visits over a six week time period. Visit one consisted of an MRI, a battery of cognitive exams, and a preparatory therapeutic session. Visit two was one day after visit one and the patients in the psilocybin group, the high dose psilocybin group, received 25 milligrams of psilocybin and those in the escitalopram group received one milligram of psilocybin. During dosing days, two mental health care providers were assigned to each patient and they would uh, tend to their physical and psychological needs of the patients during the time after they used the psilocybin. Before patients left, they were given a bottle of capsules with the high dose psilocybin group receiving placebo capsules and the low dose group receiving escitalopram capsules, starting at 10 milligrams of escitalopram. Visit three occurred one day after visit two, and during this session, patients received a psychological debriefing. Visit four occurred three weeks after visit two, and during this visit, patients received their second dose of psilocybin, 25 milligrams, or their low dose psilocybin, one milligram. After this session, the patients were asked to double their capsule dose. So the patients in the placebo group took two placebo capsules, and the patients in the escitalopram group doubled their dose from 10 to 20 milligrams by also taking two capsules. Visit five took place one day after visit four, and during this visit, a psychological integrative session occurred, and visit six occurred three weeks after visit five, and this was the final visit. During this visit, patients received a final MRI, 
a battery of cognitive exams again, and a psychological debriefing. The primary outcome was the change in a depression score, which is called the 16-item Quick Inventory of Depressive Symptomology Self-Report, or the QUIDS SR16, at six weeks. Secondary outcomes included looking at response at six weeks and remission at six weeks, among many other things in their battery of cognitive exams. For a statistical analysis, this study was conducted with the ability to detect a difference between the groups at a two-sided level of p-value less than 0.5 with 80% power. This required 20 patients per treatment arm, which they exceeded. The primary outcome was compared um, between the trial groups with the use of repeated measures analysis of covariance and COVA um, with adjustments for baseline scores. For the results, a thousand patients were screened and only 59 were randomized and included in the trial. 30 patients received the high dose psilocybin and 29 patients received the low dose psilocybin plus escitalopram. Of the enrolled patients, 39% discontinued a psychiatric medication before entering the trial, and 7% discontinued psychotherapy before entering the trial. The mean age of trial participants was 41 years old, 34% of participants were female, 88% of participants were white, and the average duration of depression before entering the trial was 22 years in the high-dose psilocybin group and 15 years in the low-dose psilocybin group. So these patients had depression for quite a long period of time. The QUID's uh, depression score at baseline was 14.5 and 16.4 respectively. The mean difference from baseline in the QUID's SR16 score at week 6 was minus 8 in the high-dose psilocybin group and minus 6 in the low-dose psilocybin group plus escitalopram. And this indicated no statistically significant difference between the groups. Though not statistically significant, 70% of patients in the high-dose psilocybin group were responders at week 6 compared to 48% of patients in the low-dose psilocybin plus escitalopram group. When you compare remission rates, they were also different as well, though not statistically significant. Remission was met by 57% of high-dose psilocybin participants as compared to 28% of low-dose psilocybin plus escitalopram patients. For safety, neither group reported any serious side effects, but many patients did have side effects. 87% of patients in the high-dose psilocybin group reported a side effect as compared to 83% in the low-dose psilocybin plus escitalopram group. The most common side effects in both groups were headaches followed by nausea. Of note, the psychedelic experience or altered consciousness was not included as a side effect. This trial had several strengths. The first strength is that the experimental treatment of psilocybin was compared to a well-established treatment in escitalopram. The trial exceeded the number of patients necessary to reach statistical significance, and additionally, the trial used a validated scale in the QUIDS SR16. The trial also had several limitations. Uh, the first limitation is the length of the trial. So it was six weeks long, and traditional antidepressants take at least two months to reach maximum efficacy. So if the trial was continued past six weeks, the escital escitalopram group may have continued to improve. A second limitation is blinding. So the patients were blinded and didn't know what group they were in, but the patients in the high-dose psilocybin group had much more cognitive changes than patients in the low-dose psilocybin group. So the patients may have been able to guess which group they were in. Next, the study participants were not from diverse backgrounds. So the average age was 41, 66% were men, 88% were white. So this may limit the applicability to other population groups. Next, average depression scores were moderate and may limit the extrapolation to patients with severe depression. Finally, both groups received psilocybin, and it hasn't been conclusively proven that one milligram of psilocybin is inert. So a limitation could be that the low-dose psilocybin was contributing to the efficacy. Overall, this was a very interesting trial because we need to study new things for depression, and trying something like psilocybin is very interesting. Its mechanism is different. It works differently than the current treatments we have, and including this type of therapeutic session after the patients receive psilocybin is exciting. 
especially as compared to an FDA-approved antidepressant medication like escitalopram. My biggest difficulty with this trial is that everyone in the trial did receive psilocybin, though the dose was very different. Half the patients received just one milligram of psilocybin, and the other half received 25 milligrams. So a big difference, but like I was saying before, we don't, we don't know for sure that one milligram of psilocybin doesn't do anything at all. So some future trials that I would like to see, though the blinding would be extremely difficult, is to give some of the patients psilocybin and give some of the patients an FDA-approved treatment of depression without any psilocybin and to compare how they do. So I'm very excited that these trials are being done and we still have a lot more to learn. Thank you so much for watching.